In this video we deal with the radiation of black bodies, the so-called black body radiation or cavity radiation. So let's get started. Black body. If white light, which consists of all known colors, hits a non-transparent object, then a certain part is always absorbed and the rest is reflected. Depending on which wavelengths are absorbed, the reflected light consists of certain wavelengths. These reflected wavelengths determine the perceived color of the object. A green leaf, for example, absorbs almost all wavelengths, except the green wavelength range between 500 and 550 nanometers. Thus, the reflected light contains exactly the wavelength range that gives us the green color impression. If, on the other hand, an object absorbs all incident wavelengths of the visible light, then obviously no visible radiation is reflected. The object appears black under normal conditions. This is the case, for example, with charcoal. A black object therefore does not emit any visible radiation. An object that absorbs all incident radiation is therefore also called a blackbody. A perfect blackbody, however, doesn't exist. In reality, every object will always reflect a part of the incident radiation. Therefore, even with black objects like the charcoal, you often see shading. Thermal radiation. One could now jump to the conclusion that a blackbody does not emit any electromagnetic radiation. From an energetic point of view, however, this conclusion is quickly disproved. This is because electromagnetic radiation is always associated with a certain radiant energy. The shorter the wavelength of the radiation, the more energetic it is. If radiant energy is absorbed by an object, as is the case in particular with a blackbody, then the absorbed energy cannot just disappear. Rather, the absorbed energy becomes noticeable in an increase in the temperature of the object, this means an increase in internal energy, to be precise. As long as a black body is irradiated and absorbs energy, its temperature would have to rise steadily. However, experience shows that objects placed in the sun, and thus irradiated do not heat up permanently. It does not matter whether it is an ideal or a real black body. As long as the radiation is even partially absorbed, the temperature should rise steadily due to the permanently absorbed radiant energy. In reality, however, one notices that the temperature of irradiated objects does not rise permanently. At some point a thermal equilibrium will be established. This also applies to black painted objects, which can be regarded as ideal black bodies in very good approximation. Therefore, objects that absorb radiant energy must also somehow emit energy. Otherwise, the observed thermal equilibrium could not be explained. One might now think that an object placed in the sun is cooled by the surrounding air due to convection or by thermal conduction with the ground. These heat transfers will surely take place and contribute to the thermal equilibrium, but there must be another mechanism. This becomes apparent when one looks at an object in a vacuum. Thermal convection and conduction require particles that transport the thermal energy. In a vacuum, however, there are no particles, so that these heat transfers cannot take place. And yet one will notice that even irradiated bodies in a vacuum will sooner or later reach thermal equilibrium. An everyday example is the Earth. The Earth is irradiated by the sun in the vacuum of space and absorbs part of the solar radiation. Obviously, there is no permanent heating of the Earth. The Earth is in a stable thermal equilibrium, which leads to an average surface temperature of about 15 degrees Celsius. This thermal equilibrium in a vacuum can only be explained by the fact that the Earth itself emits energy through electromagnetic radiation. We can now transfer this situation to any object. Since every object absorbs radiation to a greater or lesser extent, it must also emit radiation in some form, otherwise the occurrence of a thermal equilibrium could not be explained. This is independent of whether it is a perfect blackbody or not. This radiation emitted by a body in thermal equilibrium is also referred to as thermal radiation. Thermal radiation occurs with all objects, not only those in vacuum. How is thermal radiation generated? The generation of the thermal radiation can be explained by the oscillation of the atoms. In principle, 
Every accelerated movement of charged particles leads to the generation of electromagnetic waves, this means to radiation. The higher the temperature, the stronger and faster the particles oscillate, and the more radiation is emitted. This means a high intensity of the radiation. Only at absolute zero are there no atomic motions and the body does not emit any thermal radiation. At relatively low temperatures, thermal radiation is therefore not very intense and consists mainly of relatively long wavelengths. These are mainly in the infrared range and are therefore not visible to the naked eye. However, when objects are very strongly heated, the thermal radiation shifts to shorter wavelengths and then actually become visible. The reddish glow of a heated metal bar, for example, is the result of the thermal radiation becoming visible. In this way, thermal radiation is technically used in light bulbs to emit visible light. In fact, most of the thermal radiation in this case is emitted in the infrared wavelength range. In this wavelength range we cannot see the radiation but we can still perceive it. We perceive the infrared radiation through our skin in the form of heat. That is why thermal radiation is also called heat radiation. The example of the light bulb also clearly shows once again that the radiated wavelength spectrum of thermal radiation is strongly dependent on the temperature of the body. At low current and therefore low temperature, the filament is slightly reddish. At high current and therefore high temperature, the filament glows intensively yellowish. We will discuss the spectral distribution of wavelengths as a function of temperature in more detail later. Note. Thermal radiation in the narrower sense is often referred to only as invisible radiation in the infrared range. In the broadest sense, and also in this video, the term thermal radiation refers to the entire emitted wavelength range of a body due to its temperature, this means to the entire energetic radiation. Important note on the concept of a black body. As already explained, every object must emit a certain thermal radiation depending on the temperature. Otherwise it could not be explained why it comes with partial or complete absorption of radiation energy at some point to a thermal equilibrium. Even if by definition a blackbody absorbs all incident radiation, it still emits radiation. However, this is not reflected radiation, but radiation which the body emits due to the oscillation of the atoms, radiation emitted from inside so to speak. Note that the definition of a blackbody is therefore only that all incident radiation is absorbed and not that it cannot emit any radiation. A blackbody can and will do this very well. But under normal conditions at not too high temperatures, this emitted radiation lies in the non-visible wavelength range as infrared radiation. The object therefore appears black to the eye, which is why it is called a blackbody. Only if the temperature is increased very strongly and the body starts to glow, radiation in the visible wavelength range is emitted. Even if the body now has a color depending on the temperature, this object is still called a black body by definition, since all incident radiation is still absorbed. So a black body does not necessarily have to be black. An impressive example is the sun. In fact, the sun is an almost perfect black body. Only due to the enormous temperature of 5,778 Kelvin, the sun appears white glowing in the sky. Blackbody radiation. As the example of the light bulb has already shown, the emitted wavelength spectrum of thermal radiation strongly depends on the temperature. How can this dependence of thermal radiation on temperature be studied in practice? Investigating the thermal radiation of real objects, however, would have a practical disadvantage. As already explained, real objects always reflect a certain part of the incident visible radiation, which ultimately results in the color of the object. But not only visible radiation reflects such real objects, but also non-visible thermal radiation from other objects. Thus, what one would measure with real objects, if one were to analyze their emitted radiation, would not only be the thermal radiation, but always also reflected radiation from other sources. In order to avoid such reflections, one needs objects which do not reflect radiation, but absorb all incident radiation. Therefore, ideal black bodies are needed for the investigation of thermal radiation. The emitted radiation of such black bodies then consists only of thermal radiation, without any reflection of other radiation sources. 
This of course raises the question of how to realize black bodies in practice. Realization of black bodies in practice, cavity radiation. The image shows an upside down flower pot with a hole and an empty beverage can. The openings of the two objects appear black. Even in the case of the highly reflective beverage can, no visible radiation obviously escapes through the opening to the outside. In fact, the holes that appear black are almost perfect black bodies. How is it that these holes are black and obviously no reflected radiation escapes? If incident radiation enters the cavity through the hole, it is reflected several times by the walls. With each reflection a certain part of the radiation is always absorbed. After several reflections, the radiation is almost completely absorbed. Consequently, no more radiation exits through the hole. At least not the incident radiation. All incident radiation is absorbed by the cavity and the hole therefore appears black. The cavity can therefore be regarded as a black body in a very good approximation. Thus, in practice a black body can be realized relatively easily in a very good approximation by drilling a hole into a hollow object. For this reason, black body radiation is often referred to as cavity radiation. Note that the term black body actually refers only to the cavity or hole and not to the object itself. Because the body itself usually has a color, which is caused by reflections of the incident light. So the outside of the object is by no means a black body. Even if no visible light is emitted from the cavity and therefore appears black, radiation in terms of thermal radiation is emitted due to the oscillation of the atoms. However, with a thermal imaging camera, this initially non-visible blackbody radiation, which is emitted as infrared radiation, can be made visible. Spectral Distribution of Blackbody Radiation, Planck Spectrum with cavity radiation, the emitted wavelength spectrum of different materials can now be examined at different temperatures. Due to the thermal resistance even at relatively high temperatures, it makes sense to use metals. Holes are then drilled into the hollow metal blocks. The animation shows again the principle of cavity radiation, in which radiation enters through a hole, but the reflected radiation no longer exits the hole due to absorption processes. Thus, only the blackbody radiation emitted from the inside passes through the hole to the outside, and the spectral distribution can be analyzed with a detector. The influence of temperature on the spectral distribution can be realized relatively easily by heating the metal blocks. The results of the experiment is shown in a diagram in which the so-called spectral intensity is plotted over the wavelength. Usually a double logarithmic division is used in order to be able to cover a large wavelength range. The wavelength spectrum visible to the eye is illustrated in the range between 400 and 800 nanometers. The curve shows the emitted wavelength spectrum of the thermal radiation at a temperature of 3000 Kelvin of a blackbody. In simple terms, this curve indicates which wavelengths are emitted with which intensity. In the physical sense, the term intensity refers to the radiant power per unit area, this means the radiant energy emitted per unit area and per unit time. The unit is therefore what's per square meter. In this case, area means the area of the opening to the cavity, since this opening acts as a source of radiation and thus is the actual blackbody. The intensity plotted in the diagram is related to the wavelength itself, since the intensity can always only be measured within a wavelength interval and cannot be determined for an exact wavelength. This intensity per unit wavelength is therefore also referred to as spectral intensity. In such a diagram, the area under the curve corresponds to the intensity with which the radiation is emitted in the considered wavelength interval. The area under the entire curve then corresponds to the total radiated intensity of the black body at the given temperature. The wavelength spectrum of a black body emitted at different temperatures is shown in the diagram. We will discuss this in more detail in a moment. Note, however, that the radiated wavelength spectra depend only on the temperature and not on the material of a blackbody. Thus, the cavity radiation of an aluminum block has the same spectral distribution as a block of steel or brass or any other material. The emitted wavelength spectrum of a blackbody at a certain temperature is also called Planck spectrum. Examples of different wavelength spectra 
The diagram of the emitted wavelength spectra shows that the maximum of the spectral intensity shifts to shorter and shorter wavelengths with increasing temperature. At relatively low temperatures, the maximum lies in the infrared range and the radiation is not visible to our eyes. However, with increasing temperature the spectrum shifts into the visible range. A black body now begins to glow due to the visibly emitted radiation. From about 1000 Kelvin, this is a slightly reddish glow. This is familiar from glowing metal, such as the glow of the heating elements of an oven. The temperature here is about 800 degrees Celsius. At around 2000 Kelvin, the proportion of the yellow wavelength range in the spectrum has increased. The body tends to radiate yellowish. However, since the emitted intensity is relatively high in the entire visible range, all color receptors in our eyes are overexposed. In this case, all receptors are excited almost identically, and the yellowish radiation usually appears white to our eye. The white color of the electric arc during welding with temperatures of over 3000 Kelvin can also be explained by the overexposure of the color receptors in our eyes. In fact, the emitted spectrum is rather a yellowish wavelength spectrum. This yellowish color can only be perceived as such if the intensity is greatly reduced, for example if the radiation is observed indirectly as scattered light on a white sheet of paper. In addition, the spectral distribution shows that at such high temperatures of over 3000 Kelvin more ultraviolet radiation is emitted. This explains the protective equipment required for welding, which not only protects the eyes, but also the arms. Without covered arms one would get a sunburn by the UV radiation otherwise. At even higher temperatures of about 6000 Kelvin, almost all visible wavelengths with the same intensity are present in the radiated spectrum. This radiation therefore appears white. This explains the white solar radiation, since the sun as an almost perfect blackbody has a surface temperature of 5778 Kelvin. The sun also radiates UV radiation to a not inconsiderable extent. Fortunately, a large part of this UV radiation is absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. Significantly higher temperatures than our sun have so-called blue giants. Some of these astronomical objects have 50 times the mass of the sun. The surface temperatures can reach several 10,000 Kelvin. At these temperatures the blue wavelength range is more present in the radiated spectrum than the reddish parts. The light of such blue giants therefore appears bluish, which is the reason why such stars are called blue giants. The mathematical description of blackbody radiation is given by Planck's law. This is explained in more detail in another video. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.